We're Amira, we're from Scunthorpe, we play alternative rock music. Um, I play the guitar, frontman. My name is Luke. I'm Josh, I play the guitar. I'm Gary, I play the bass guitar. I'm James. I like to party. <laughs> no, I like to party. <laughs> we all like to party. <laughs> you guys don't no, party. Yeah. In my spare time, I play no, you, you guys don't party. <laughs> all right, let's party. <laughs> the band got started originally. I was playing with some guys in my mum's garage. Um, we really sucked. It was just like 4-4 four, four beats and power chords and stuff. And then uh, the guitarist stopped turning up to band practice. So uh, I, I'm just, I just met Josh not, not so long beforehand and uh, convinced him to come join my Blink-182 cover band. Yeah. <laughs> and it kind of went on from there. Yeah, and I turned up with, uh, I didn't even have my own guitar, I had to borrow one off James. <laughs> <laughs> I, I turned up and I was like, alright, let's get some covers going. Um, plugged in, he just started doing this beat, I started jamming along to it. We realised like straight there we just could like write together instantly, so like from there we just started boshing just calls together that sounded cool and singing over it. We didn't have a singer. No, we took it in turns, it yeah. was cool. <laughs> Taking into it, and then like yeah, after after a while, um, we was like we need a singer, and a new guitarist. So we got in touch with Luke, who had like been who jumped on stage with us once in our old yeah band. yeah. Like, and I hated him. I hated this guy because yeah, I was like, get the oh. hell off, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, you were you playing that to Monkey's song, weren't you? Yeah. yeah and I, was like, 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 I was like, right, this is my time. <laughs> on. I jumped on stage and I was like, yeah, it's not like I know this song, I know the words. Yeah. But then it was because you guys went through like a, a few different styles before I was in the band. We just couldn't decide what then, we were doing, yeah, man. And then you know, I got the message like straight away. Uh, one day, just you know, oh, we need, we're up for a singer slash guitarist. Are you free? And I was like, within ten minutes, I was like yeah. down there thinking with my amp, I was walking through the street <laughs> with my guitar with no case and an amp thinking. I'm in a band. <laughs> yes! Because I've been playing my, I'm guitar in my bedroom to um, indie stuff for like three years. I was just like, oh, please. So uh, yeah, it, it was good. And then um, we've gone through. Like droppy. Uh, yeah, going really heavy. And then we've, we, we had like a real big change when, uh, when the screamer left. Um, and I had to actually start singing properly instead of being the backing singer. Um, and we've gone through quite a few bass players, haven't we, Gary? <laughs> Oh, it's Gary! We found, we, found the one. we found the one now. Gary's our bass player and he's our one for life. He's our third marriage, our fourth marriage. Yeah. Like fifth, as long as he stops wearing the fifth? I'm fifth, I think. Is it fifth? I thought you were oh sixth. Oh my god. I don't know, I've lost count. Yeah, but still, you know, we've, had, we've gone through a lot and we, a lot of people who were, who were quality, but there was never really the. It wasn't like the heart of the band, it didn't feel together. Whereas now, like from day one, like when we had our first gig with Gary, like uh, last week, week before. Yeah. And it just, it didn't feel like it was a big thing. It was like we've been gigging with him for years. It's just like straight away, it's on there. Like, yeah, we're going to go gig. And it's been, since then, it's just been. It was like two and a half months of waiting for the gig though. As yeah, well, but it? still, you know, it's, it, it could have been like, it, it could have built up. It could have been like, like a real big pressure thing, but it wasn't. It was yeah. really, it was, it was like so. Natural, it was good. When 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 it first started, my main influence was Michael Jackson, to be honest. Which so uh, I was only I was only little. I used to love. I used to listen to Blood, is, Blood on the Dance Floor, um, that album, um, because my dad used to play it all the time. But as it's gone, and that was the first time I ever thought, yeah, I actually like music. Music's quite a cool thing. But I was only like what eight or nine years old. For me, the best experience so far was when we did our uh, first ever video release. We did a big gig for it, and uh, people people were just going crazy for it. It was it was insane. It was so so surreal to have such a crowd of people who knew the words and singing back at you. And I mean, when it when we released it, it went it went like viral, which was insane for us. There was comments from all around the world, and there was just I mean, we got so many we got thousands of hits in the first few weeks, and which is just awesome. Yeah. It, it was like shared in like Australia and. New Zealand, yeah. all like literally as far as you go, it was just like being shared by so people. I think it was like last time I looked, it was like like two hundred and some shares, and I was just like in that was like in over yeah, one yeah, night. It was just like mental. Yeah, it was like bigger than I expected yeah. it to be. It just blew up. It was amazing. I think for me, one of the best experiences we, that I've had as in in this band so far has been the recording. Um, I mean, we recorded um, overnight from seven pm till five am, and. Uh, and everything that's, that, that was in my in in my head of how I think, oh, this is gonna how it's how it's gonna sound. It's gonna sound like this. And then 
it, it come down to it and it was it was obviously like what you want it to sound like but it's just that much better when you can hear it back um like like save like that that's where it is we've captured that um and then of course getting it sent off to to chicago to be mixed and mastered was just next level really we weren't expecting anything like that it came along and was like yeah definitely let's get that sent across there it was it, it was pretty awesome I think for me personally, my favourite experience about being in the mirror so far is sort of the live aspect of, aspect of it. Sort of um, travelling from city to city, playing gigs, especially one where we played a venue in Leicester and people were um, just coming up who have never even seen, not from the area that we're from, just asking where they can get our music, telling us that they came just to specifically mm-hmm. see us. And that is just unreal when you start in your bedroom and then you go from your own sort of town basically and then branch out further afield yeah. it's just unreal it's amazing personally my my favorite experience is like after a show i got this message off the fan and um it was just like your guitar lines are awesome like I was watching you you nailed everything it was just so catchy everything you did and i was like oh, cheers mate these guys call me napoleon because I'm small and angry, basically. <laughs> I get really frustrated sometimes. I mean, like, even, like, um, I guess if I, get, if I make any mistake or anything, I'm really, like, really hard on myself. But yeah, I also get, you do. I do get a bit mildly sometimes. Because yeah. I know if how I'm going to be, your way. basically. Um, if a song don't go your way, you're like, that's it, I quit. <laughs> I've never quit the band. <laughs> Josh is the one who always quits the band. Yeah, Josh, Josh quits the band all the time. <laughs> he doesn't really, he doesn't. No, it's all <laughs> You're the joke, right, James? I tend to be. He just jumps and does the Africa face. <laughs> James, I won't give you an example. He's also got to be the best cook as well, because he's the only one who ever does. Hey, it's just cook. barbecue, isn't it? Yeah, I sorry. am the barbecue king. I'm, I'm sorry, but you're not. You are. You yeah, just, just no, shoved meat on a barbecue. There's no. Like, I am the barbecue no king. Do you, <laughs> look, do you guys this wear a chef's hat and an apron when you cook? This is the guy that put digestive biscuits on a barbecue to get it started. Because it's did it work? Because it said did it work? He said that the sugar starts the fire. Did it work? No, <laughs> it didn't work. <laughs> Yeah, it was awesome. Also, you do use like two bottles of light fluid on every pan. Look at it. We'll leave it as James is the best cook. James is the only one that cooks for everybody else. I Josh is like, oh, you, you're like the busted one, aren't you? You do yeah, the jumps and stuff. I do the jumps and that, yeah. Busted jumps. <laughs> I don't know, what would you guys say that I am? I don't know. The riff, riff maker. The riff meister. We're not allowed to swear. Alright, fair <laughs> James is definitely the Joker, without a, without a shadow of doubt. You've just got to see him play his drums live, and you know. <laughs> Cheers. It's a massive but, joke. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but you, it, you you just got to have a look. Just like five minutes, and you can tell James is the one that just yeah. doesn't take anything seriously. The faces. I mean, to be fair, it's got even me or Josh have got to be the clumsy one as well. Mm. To be mm. fair, because you well, you fall over all the time. You just run into everyone, man. <laughs> Yeah. I hit you with my guitar like about eight times <laughs> during the live stream. I know. It's but I think we run into each other. Yeah, I think the other gig we saved ourselves, we were both about to fall over and we just fell into each other. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what we are. We're, we're like Clumsy. girders which keep... Yeah. <laughs> Bookends. <laughs> I think if we were going to switch roles, or if I was going to switch roles with anyone, I'd be on. I'd want to play drums. Because I've always loved playing drums, no matter what, like, I mean... I used to be, when I come home from work, I used to just, and if I was stressed, I'd go and play my drum kit. Uh, I wouldn't really play guitar that much, until recently. Um, I've, I, I don't even play my drums anymore. But I think, drum, drums are ace, you can just hit stuff really loud, so that's what I'd do. I think, personally for me, if I could change any of these guys here, again, I'd probably go for James with his, with his drums. That's 2 nil. Because <laughs> James has, like, the most amazing cowbell on that kit ever and just yeah. to be able to hit that cowbell <laughs> it would just be living the dream I think I'd want to take Gary's place because like, he's got it easy <laughs> <laughs> but he is the linchpin like the bass is the punch yeah. of the band so it's very important but if it's like but nobody cares nobody notices it but if it's not there it's like a big no, deal if I was going to change places I'd be the front man because I got, I got the most swag I got oh, the looks you did not just say that I got so much swag. James has got the teeth to do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh gosh. Personally, you two. I think you two for one gig should swap roles. Would you really be the front man? Yeah. Would you really want to do that? Yeah, that'd, that'd be well fun. I'd love to. I just do play guitar as well. Yeah, I'd you love to. I know I can't. That's why I don't. <laughs> the main achievement for us that we want to get is just people to like it. For me, I, anyway, for me, 
it's just so people like listen to it understand what it's about understand what I'm you know what the lyrics mean and what the music behind it empowers and just get it and like it that's all I'm that's all I care about I don't know about you guys same here I'm just in it for the ladies <laughs> he isn't doing very well <laughs> <laughs> That is all about creating a feeling though, isn't it? Like, mm. making people feel the way you feel, like, through the music. It's a cool thing, isn't it? It's also cool to progress as well, like, start off in your bedroom, then go to, like, local venues, sort of pubs, clubs around the area, then go to bigger ones, sort of further afield, and then that's what I think, that's what I like to do. That's what I mm. It's getting new, new audience. Yeah, new audience, yeah, getting more people listening to it. Because then you know if your music's any good or not. Because if your friends like it, fair enough. But if you start playing further out and you get people you don't know coming up to you saying, have you got a CD? And you're just like, it's oh. awesome. Isn't it? <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think when it comes to what we want to do going forward, is just to get more and more people to know who we are. Um, just to share what we write with new people. Obviously, don't neglect the people that have already liked our band and just go yeah we just want more and more people that isn't what it's about but to grow the base and get further and further afield I mean Europe is a massive dream of, of mine and personally yeah. I know. Yeah. to go around Europe would just be epic so with that I think next step going out and touring staying out and new, new lands to explore and any advice that I could give to anyone who's starting up basically just play what you want to play that's what I did I mean like, like I say, I started playing guitar first of all when I was like 12 years old and the guy was like, right, this is your A string, and din, 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 and that was my technique. So I was like, well, I don't want to do that. I want to play, teach me a, a chord so I can start singing on top. And so I, I completely just, I didn't like it. So I, I put it away for like three or four years and then I come back to it when I, when I started really getting into music and seeing live bands and thinking, no, I really want to do that. And so I just started playing stuff that I wanted to play and then it made me want to carry on because the main thing really is keeping, if you want to get good at something, like the, like the guitar for example, you've got to find ways to keep yourself interested in it because otherwise you just get bored and you just either stay at the same level or you just don't play it anymore. So yeah, that's what I'd say is to just find something that you really love and then make your own version on it and, and keep yourself interested in it basically. Yeah, and like, um, just work really hard because it can get like you can get really low points where, like, you're in a band and you don't get gigs for ages and ages, and promoters mm. are just telling you to go away and just not get in touch. But you just got to keep persisting and just getting in touch with them and make sure you practice as well. Because if you don't, if you're not good at your mm. instrument, no one's going to want to book you. Yeah, yeah. Also, it helps if you actually leave the bedroom and find musicians who are like like-minded and want to play the same music as you. Mm. Maybe even even if you have to change a little bit. And, Sort of. If I had any advice for young musicians just starting out, I'd probably tell them to pick up a tambourine, fuse it with a ukulele, <laughs> and uh, probably use that as some kind of shovel <laughs> to dig down deep into the earth and find the source of rock and roll. Where Elvis Presley is sat on a big chair. <laughs> and then you'd probably ask him, because he knows better than I do. Oh, you're <laughs> <laughs>